Today we're going to be taking a look at an impressive power station from All Powers, which is the R1500, and in this video we'll be performing a few different tests to see how well it holds up to the manufacturer's stated specs, and I'll leave you with my final thoughts on the R1500 and show you how it stacks up to some of the other power stations that I've tested in the past to help you decide whether or not this is something that you should actually buy. If you want to jump to a particular section of the video, you can reference the timestamps, but before we get started, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. And if you want to pick up the power station and support my channel at the same time, you can use the affiliated links down in the description below. All right, so this is the R1500, and this is a lithium iron phosphate battery based power station, which is rated for over 3,500 charge cycles, which makes it a very viable option for people who plan to use it on a regular basis or who want a setup that they can be confident in lasting over a decade. It has a large LCD display, and this is going to give you the remaining battery life as a percentage, the input and the output speeds in watts, an estimation of the remaining runtime as well as basic indicators letting you know whether or not the USB ports and the outlets are live. To the left of the display we've got a USB output section which includes two high-speed type A's and a pair of 100 watt PD USB C ports which are going to give you lightning fast device charging speeds. So there is a decent quantity of ports here and to the right of that there's also a car style output. Beneath that we've got an array of four different 110 volt AC outlets as well as a dedicated button to turn them on and off and this is typically more than you see on most other power stations which is nice because it is very convenient for you to plug in a bunch of different devices simultaneously and each of these ports have nice covers which are going to help protect them when they're not being used. There's two different 15 watt wireless charging pads on top of the device and my phone does seem to get along quite nicely with this setup and this is really convenient because you don't have to worry about having a way to charge your phone if you forget to bring a cable and it's also nice that it can charge two different devices at the same time. On the left side of the R1500 there's a small cover which houses the AC input for charging the power station and an input for connecting a solar panel and all powers also sent me over their huge 400 watt solar panel which I'll be testing out with the R1500 in my next video on the right side there's another cover and that's where you can find ports where you can actually add two additional B1000 batteries and expand the capacity of your setup now we're going to jump into some testing to see if the R1500 holds up to some of the most important tasks and first we'll see if it can continuously run at the 1800 watt max output that it claims and this matters because we want to know whether or not it can handle the more higher watt power hungry devices. So to test this we're going to plug in a few different devices and try to push this power station to its limits and since the device does have high output rating we're going to jump right in with some high watt devices including this hot air gun and a small hair dryer and together they were drawing right around 1830 watts which was slightly higher than the 1800 watts stated and if you take a look inside this hot air gun you can see just how hot these coils are getting. I did try cranking it up further and it did conk out after I cranked up the hair dryer to its max output which brought the combined total to around 2300 watts but after I turned it off I was able to turn it back on and run with the previous output levels at just over 1800 watts. A very small handful of the power stations that I've tested could even run the hot air gun let alone an additional hair dryer as well which really impressed me and overall the output exceeded their claims and surpassed my expectations in this category. Next we're going to test the true watt hour capacity of this power station and see how close it comes to the 1152 watt hour stated and this matters because this will give you an indication of how long you'll be able to run your devices when you look up their watts. So in order to test this, we've got a wall outlet style power meter, which will display the kilowatt hours, and we'll be running a few box fans and an electric blanket, which combined for a total of about 210 watts, which will cause the internal fan to come on. So it'll be a decent test of how efficient this device really is, and we're gonna take a few hours to discharge the battery. Most of the day went by and at the end it's giving us a measurement of the total watt hours and the meter is showing 914 watt hours which is just over 79% of the stated capacity which is okay but it's not the best that I've seen by any means. But the good news is that the true cost per usable watt hour is going to be around 88 cents which is actually quite affordable compared to many of the other power stations that I've tested in the past and we'll touch more on this towards the end of the video. One thing I discovered is that the AC outputs get disabled with around 5 to 6% of their remaining battery life and they won't work again until you charge the power station back up. 
but the USB ports do still work so you can use those, charge some low power devices, but this is impacting the AC efficiency score by a few percent. Now that we're down to a 5% charge, we're gonna plug in the power station to the wall outlet and see how long it takes to charge back up. And the charging cable itself is quite small and there's no power adapter brick like you see with most other power stations, which makes it a little less cumbersome and more convenient to carry than many other charging setups. On the front of the power station, there's an input, which is what we'll be using to test this out. And you can see on the display that the charging speed is reasonably close at about 1,010 watts and I plugged it in at 7.23 a.m. and it was fully charged by 8.58 a.m. so the total charge time was 1 hour and 35 minutes. This is actually a pretty impressive charging speed considering the capacity of the power station is high. One thing I saw on All Power's website shows that you can actually plug in a solar panel and have the wall charger charging simultaneously which will allow you to get even faster charging speeds. Another test I like to run on my power station is a fridge runtime test and this might be important for you if you're worried about your food spoiling during a power outage and this test is pretty straightforward and what we're gonna do is plug in the fridge into the power station and see how long it can run for. I plugged in the fridge at 5.51 a.m. And we did use it normally throughout the day and we must have opened and closed it dozens of times and it was able to keep the fridge running until 4 15 pm for a total of 10 hours and 36 minutes and based on these numbers the fridge is consuming around 90 watts per hour the final test we're going to be doing is to see if this device has a ups mode and whether or not it can be used as a backup battery for your electronics and right now the power station is plugged into the wall outlet and we've got a laptop here that we've taken the battery out and we are able to plug it in and it turns on just fine so now that it's plugged in we're going to unplug the charger that's connected to the wall outlet and when we do this we'll see if the computer dies or not and as you can see the laptop did remain on so this device would work reasonably well as a backup battery for basic electronic devices now i'll take a few minutes to give you my final thoughts on the r1500 which currently sells for about 7.99 on the alpowers website by itself or 11.99 if you want to pick it up together with a 400 watt solar panel a few months ago i put together this database of power stations i've tested tested over the year to help better compare and put each power station's strengths and weaknesses into perspective to hopefully give a better sense of the true value that they offer based on the data that I've collected from the tests like you saw earlier in this video. So now all the data from this power station is included. This is the highest watt output model of all the power stations that I've tested and this is impressive considering some of the more expensive power stations from BioLite, Roundhood, and Geniverse max out at around 1200 watts. So this is definitely an impressive option if you need to be able to run lots of watts simultaneously and it does cost much less than most of these other larger models. It stacks up fine in the max AC output as a percentage category and in the tested versus claim watt hour category it did come in slightly below average at about 79% so it doesn't deliver all that well in this department but it actually did have a decent cost per watt hour at around 88 cents per watt hour which is also a lot better than BioLite, Runhood, and Geniverse. Charging speeds were the second fastest in the table and the fastest of the larger power stations as well. Overall I do think this is a great power station for the price but let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section and if you have any interest in learning more and supporting the channel please consider using the links down in the description below and also leave a link to a power station database there as well.